welcome to our scientific channel. Today, we embark on a journey deep within the Earth to explore the fascinating world of seismology and earthquakes. Join us as we delve into the forces that shape our planet and the incredible science behind these powerful natural phenomena. Our adventure begins by understanding what causes earthquakes. An earthquake is the result of a sudden release of energy in the Earth's lithosphere. This energy can be unleashed in four different ways. First, through the rupture of a fault or fault segment, known as tectonic earthquakes. These are the most common type. Second, volcanic earthquakes, caused by the accumulation of magma in a volcano's chamber. Third, polar earthquakes, caused by the cracking of ice caps, which resonates through the Earth's crust. And fourth, earthquakes of artificial origin, such as those resulting from explosions. Tectonic earthquakes are associated with the movement along fault lines. These faults come in three main types, normal, reverse, and strike-slip. Normal faults are dip-slip and so involve in vertical movement. In a normal fault, the block above the fault moves down relative to the block below the fault. Normal faults occur mainly in areas where the crust is being extended, like as in divergent boundaries. Earthquakes linked with normal faults have generally a magnitude less than 7. The reverse fault is the opposite of the normal fault, the block above the fault moves up relative to the block below the fault. Reverse faults occur in areas where the crust is being shortened like at convergent boundaries. These faults, particularly those along convergent plate boundaries are associated with the most powerful earthquakes. In subduction zones, Earthquakes represent half of those that are destructive on Earth, and dissipate 75% of the Earth's seismic energy. It is the only place where we find deep earthquakes, from 300 to 645 kilometers. The strike-slip fault is a steep structure where the two blocks move horizontally. Transform boundaries are example of strike-slip faults. These faults, particularly in transform boundaries, can produce major earthquakes, up to a magnitude of 8. At the level of large strike-slip faults, earthquakes occur with centers of intermediate depth, from 0 to 20 km on average, which correspond to 15% of the energy. Most tectonic earthquakes occur at plate boundaries, where these forces are at play. Intraplate earthquakes, on the other hand, occur within tectonic plates, away from their boundaries. These rare events are triggered by the accumulation of internal stresses within the plates. Earthquakes of volcanic origin are linked to the activity of volcanoes. They result from the movement of magma beneath the Earth's surface, leading to seismic activity. Now, let's explore the main features of an earthquake. The hypocenter, also called the focus, is the point of origin within the Earth, while the epicenter is directly above it on the surface. Seismic waves radiate outward from the hypocenter, causing ground movement. When an earthquake strikes, Two main categories of waves are generated, body waves and surface waves. Body waves include P waves, which moved by successive expansion and compression, parallel to the direction of wave propagation. P waves are the fastest, 6 km per second near the surface. So these are the waves recorded first on a seismogram and these waves can travel in any type of material, including fluids. S waves, which move perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. The S wave are around 60% more slowly than the P wave in any given material, they appear second on seismograms. It is interesting to note that the S waves are not able to travel in liquid. Their absence in the Earth's outer core suggests a liquid state. Surface waves, on the other hand, propagate along the Earth's surface. They are more slowly than seismic body waves, P waves and S waves. They can reach an amplitude of several centimeters in big earthquakes and they are usually the waves responsible of the destructive effects of earthquakes. We can distinguish two types of surface waves. The Rayleigh waves. These waves include both longitudinal and transverse motions that decrease exponentially in amplitude as distance from the surface increases. They are generated by the interaction of P waves and S waves. They are more slowly than P wave and S wave, around 90% of the velocity of S waves. The love waves. These waves are horizontally polarized surface waves. They are the result of the interference between many S waves. 
They are slower than P and S waves, but faster than the Rayleigh waves. Measuring earthquakes is crucial to understanding their impact. The magnitude of an earthquake represents the energy it releases. Magnitude can be measured using different scales, including the Richter scale and the moment magnitude scale. The media often use the term of Richter scale or open Richter scale, but these terms are not correct. In dead, the Richter scale is a local scale especially adapted to the Californian earthquakes. The magnitudes usually cited nowadays are in fact moment magnitudes. Magnitude and intensity are not the same, intensity measures the damage caused. Earthquakes vary in magnitude, frequency, and their effects. From microearthquakes to the largest recorded ones, their impact can be felt worldwide. In this segment, we delve into the diverse realm of earthquake frequency and their consequential effects. As the Earth's restless crust constantly shifts, earthquakes come in a wide range of magnitudes, frequencies, and intensities. From the smallest tremors known as microearthquakes, barely perceptible to humans, to the awe-inspiring might of the largest recorded quakes, their influence ripples across the globe. Let's explore these categories in more detail. Microearthquakes, measuring less than 1.9 in magnitude, occur in abundance, with around 8,000 of these tiny tremors happening each day. These gentle shakings often go unnoticed by people, serving as a reminder of the constant activity beneath our feet. Moving up the scale, we encounter very minor earthquakes, ranging from 2.0 to 2.9 in magnitude, occurring at a rate of about 1,000 per day. While usually not felt by people, these quakes contribute to the Earth's dynamic nature. Minor earthquakes, with magnitudes between 3.0 and 3.9, are more noticeable. They happen approximately 50,000 times a year. These quakes might lead to noticeable ground movement and noises but typically cause little to no damage. Small earthquakes, in the range of 4.0 to 4.9 magnitude, create noticeable shaking within structures. There are around 6,000 of them each year. While they can rattle objects inside buildings, their impact remains relatively light. Moderate earthquakes, ranging from 5.0 to 5.9 in magnitude, have the potential to cause significant damage to poorly designed structures in specific areas. These occur about 800 times annually. Properly constructed buildings typically withstand the forces of these quakes. Moving up the scale, strong earthquakes, with magnitudes from 6.0 to 6.9, can lead to serious damage over a substantial area. There are approximately 120 of them each year. Only buildings designed to withstand such forces can resist the shaking near the epicenter. Very strong earthquakes, in the range of 7.0 to 7.9 magnitude, have the potential to cause severe damage over extensive areas. Approximately 18 of these quakes occur each year. In the vicinity of the epicenter, virtually all buildings are affected. Major earthquakes, measuring from 8.0 to 8.9 magnitude, can result in very severe damage, affecting areas hundreds of kilometers around the epicenter. About one of these quakes occurs annually. Even structures tens of kilometers from the epicenter may sustain significant damage. Finally, near-total destruction earthquakes, those with a magnitude of 9.0 or higher, devastate areas for kilometers or miles around. They are relatively rare, occurring approximately once every few centuries. These colossal events leave a profound and lasting impact on the affected regions, requiring extensive recovery efforts. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the most powerful earthquakes that have left an indelible mark on Earth's geological history since the dawn of the 20th century. These seismic giants have reshaped landscapes, challenged our understanding of tectonic forces, and brought about profound consequences for communities around the world. First on our list is the monumental 1960 Valdivia earthquake, which holds the record for the highest magnitude ever recorded at a staggering 9.5. This seismic event struck Chile with relentless force, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Following closely is the 2004 Sumatra earthquake, measuring 9.4 in magnitude. This undersea megathrust earthquake unleashed a devastating tsunami that swept across the Indian Ocean, resulting in one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. 
1964 Prince William Sound earthquake, with a magnitude of 9.2, rattled Alaska and caused massive land uplift, forever altering the region's geography. In 2011, the Tohoku earthquake in Japan, measuring 9.1, not only unleashed destructive shaking but also triggered a catastrophic tsunami and led to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. The list continues with the 1952 Kamchatka earthquake in the Soviet Union, the 1906 ecuador colombia earthquake, the 2010 Concepcion earthquake in Chile, and others, each leaving a lasting imprint on our understanding of the Earth's dynamics and the resilience of human communities. These earthquakes remind us of the awe-inspiring power of the Earth's forces and the importance of ongoing research and preparedness to mitigate their impact. They stand as a testament to the ever-evolving science of seismology and the enduring ability of humanity to adapt and rebuild in the face of nature's most formidable challenges. As we wrap up our journey through the world of seismology and earthquakes, we're reminded of the dynamic nature of our planet. Earthquakes, with their awe-inspiring power, are a testament to the ongoing geological processes that shape our world. Stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of science. Thank you for joining us on this scientific adventure. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more exciting discoveries from our scientific channel.